You know what's fascinating to me, Fowdy, is that the two players that were in doubt coming into this game were the two goal scorers, Megan Rapinoe and Roosevelt, yeah. both having hamstring injuries. Did you see either of them hampered at all in the game? Because in the first half, watching Rapinoe, I'm like, she doesn't have the legs. She, that hamstring looks like it's hurting it more than we actually know. Yeah, I thought, I, I thought Rapino looked a little bit sluggish in the first half, but we've seen her in this tournament, actually. This isn't the first time in that first half where she seems to actually grow into the game in the second half, which you would think at 33 it would be the opposite, right? And mind you, she didn't play in that semifinal match, so uh, she did come in with more rested legs than others, but she wasn't taking those free kicks as we've seen her take, so I think they probably pulled her off that a bit. And... and you have to say, again, I know this has been a theme we've been talking about on the podcast all tournament, but Jill Ellis making the move because a lot of coaches might have said with two injuries or in quotation marks injuries, slight injuries, do I put both those players in with the risk of having to possibly sub them out early? And her decision paid off again. She's made some moves in this tournament that have all paid off. Um, and as we're seeing, she's become the first ever coach to win two Women's World Cup titles. Yeah, back to back. Uh, Jill Ellis, the individual players, lots of individual performances I think that we can dive in on. But let's do that a little bit later in the show because I think this match itself, you said it yesterday, we expected goals. What happened? Well, I think you saw a team for the Netherlands that pulled a Jedi mind trick on us a little mm. bit, Seb. You know, they like to play possession. They like a lot of the ball. Jill Ellis even talked about that in the press conference. They expected that they were going to have so much more possession in the USA's half. But that didn't happen. The USA's Achilles heel is always breaking down a bunker, trying to figure out how to unclog passing lanes that have been filled with players from the other team. They weren't able to do that the first 30 minutes, but once they started getting around the corner, the U.S. started to figure it out through that wing play. So I think what you saw was a Dutch team concede. All right, we'll concede the ball because we'd rather have defensive solidity. Mm. And that's what they did. Yeah. It seemed in many ways to be a very comfortable match for the Americans once they got that goal. Julie, I wonder if that's what you sensed in the building. Once the U.S. had the lead, it didn't seem they were likely to relinquish it. No, and especially because that second goal came so quickly after. I think it was only eight min minutes later after the Rapino penalty kick. And then clearly the Dutch are doing something which you should do. They switched formations. They went to a three back. They started taking more risks. And the game opened up quite a bit. I mean, there should have been three, four goals, I think. And you clearly put that game away. But it didn't seem like the Dutch um, were on that. Even with the tactical shift, they were then playing more defense because the game opened up. I, I will say, too, that, you know, it was smart of them, I think, because one day less rest, as we talked about for the Dutch, 30 minutes more extra time they had to grind out in overtime against Sweden. They played in the game before that in really crippling heat at 3 p.m. So, I think they knew going into this game, if this game was open and the United States was flying and they were in a world of hurt and they, can, and they were able to contain them for those first 30. Kate, do you feel like this was the best U.S. performance we've seen so far in this tournament? Ooh. It's tough, right? That is a tough one. I don't think we can ever have one best USA performance because it's been in pulses, right? Mm. They show their dominance and their ability to attack in like five minute spurts and then they go back and they recede and they sit back in this like 4-1-4-1 that we saw against France, that we saw against England, and they invite pressure. And I actually don't think that's the United States' biggest strength, mm. but it worked because opponents and other coaches couldn't figure out a way to beat that tactic, which showed their inexperience, to be honest, and their lack of quality at the highest levels, especially France and England, I thought you had to blame the coaches a little bit for how they lined up their teams mm. and then how they adapted. So the United States did what needed to be done. They were still doing enough to win, mm -hmm. but then they started doing enough to win with swagger, which built this intimidation factor into these opponents, and you got to see it today. I mean, Julie's talking about the accumulated fatigue and the fact that they're at the end of their pro season, right, because they mirror the Premier League. They go all year round, and now they're done. The United States players, they're just starting their club season. They're just in the middle of it, so they're fresher. So in the end, I think Jill Ellis got everything right, mm. but I can't say that this has been the best 90 minutes performance we've seen. Yeah, you know, we, we always talk about the, the mentality when you talk about this UN's, U.S. women's national team. I wonder, Julie, if you saw any of that mentality on display maybe later in this match when the U.S. seemed to really grab the game by the horns. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is, again, this is so typical of this group. 
in what we've seen that as it gets and it got to a point where you know in the first half the Dutch were pressing at one point uh, at second half they had a little swing of momentum and every time that momentum would swing and you saw there were some concussion issues or some heads that had been banging or a player went down and they were down a player the United States just grits it out and I've loved that about this group. They're feisty, they're gritty, they want to play, but they also realize, look, if we're not playing the best game that we have all tournament, because I don't think this was their best game all tournament, then we're also going to be able to grit it out if we need to as well. So I, I definitely think you saw the mentality pop in. I mean, this is a team you know with a lead like that, there's no way they're relinquishing that. You just mm. feel it. You feel it in the stadium. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.